and I will put in the grave as many as I can. It's time for me to kill. And it's time for me to die. And there we go. Just like in the trailer, that is how Hatred actually opens. From the moment he steps outside of his house, you are in control of the action. Looks pretty darn cool to me, and this is on sort of medium to low settings because I was having some trouble recording it. What stands out to me immediately is the soundtrack. I'll let you listen to that for a second. Check it out. It's a low, almost industrial, throbbing hum. This game would be really cool with some blasting metal, but I think I'm glad they didn't go over the top with the soundtrack. I think if there was too much going on, it would have ruined the atmosphere. You'll notice I'm not just going all out shooting, that's for a couple reasons. One, ammo for the cool guns, like the assault rifle, isn't actually that plentiful. And two, in order to do executions, you have to not kill them with your gun. You have to just sort of make sure they're in pain on the floor and then you can execute them. Besides being metal as fuck and looking cool, uh, these little executions, they refill your health. That bar at the bottom is your health. There are other victims. I'm sending additional units. As you heard there, you can actually hear the police radio, so you know when the cops are coming. Mostly, police exist to give you more ammo and to get you new guns. And to kill you, of course, but that's secondary, that's not as important. You can also steal their police cars, run people over, smash it with it. It is pretty damn fun, I have to admit. Despite press coverage making it sound like this game is just a chaos sandbox, there are side missions and main missions. This is a side mission that I dealt with using some explosives and completing it got me a respawn point because yeah you can die in this game even though it's quite easy to get health back just like in a game like space marine with the executions you may well die i died i'm playing this game on hard which is the medium difficulty there's wuss there's hard and there's extreme anyway this is the first level and the main mission is to cleanse the police station my first approach was quite careless. While you can make a lot of health back with executions, you can't just be an idiot like I was here. You do have to use cover, you do have to be a bit strategic. After my first death, I went round the back and I found that I could get some bulletproof vests and I could get more ammo. This, plus more careful play, including utilizing the crouch, led to my success. I then escaped. Now, the intros and outros to levels are extremely cheesy, but if you're into B-movie, like B-gore movies, you'll dig it. There is a slight disappointment that his lips don't move, but I guess that just means he's a genocidal ventriloquist. And I need more. Much more. It's time to shoot some canned meat. From my first impressions of this game, I'm not disappointed. They made a game. It's not just a joke, it's not just hype, it is a fun game, and I'm enjoying it. The style that they showed off in their trailers works, and if what you've been seeing has appealed to you, I reckon you're safe in buying it. But, as usual, that's just another one of my harmful opinions. And by the way, if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get to see every level of this game as I'm going to do a sort of highlight reel let's play. Come on, you fucking parasites. The death is waiting. You've got a lesson to learn. <laughs> Boom, and here we go again, back to the slaughter. I have learned how to roll and dodge bullets, which is quite useful. Addressing something someone said in my first impressions video, which also serves as my level 1 highlights. I, I understand now. The voice is in his head, of course his lips aren't moving. Never mind, I was an idiot about that. But what does stand is that this game is fun, and it's nowhere near as grim as people were making it out to be. People have been asking me, do you think this deserved the AO rating? Nah, nah. If this deserves the AO rating, there are a hell of a lot of games that deserve it too. There are two things that people have been asking about. One, about the frame rate. Um, that's pretty much down to my recording. The developers actually suggested a different program for me to use, so I'll be trying that and seeing if that helps. And two, I've seen comments that people think the AI is really dumb. It kind of is, to be honest, but I don't think that really hurts the fun. The main challenge is getting swarmed. If you don't screw up, you're not going to be in that much trouble, but if you make a mistake, you can get overwhelmed quite easily. So it's almost like you either do perfectly or you get fucked up. I have to say, I do like the look of this sewer level. Well, I say sewer level, but it's not really a sewer level. It's a section of a level that's in the sewer, as I was relieved to find out when I ended up thinking the level was just going to be super short, but it's not. What came to my mind running through the twisted mazes of the sewers was, wouldn't it be cool if there was a timer and a leaderboard for how fast you could get through levels? At the moment, all I can see as far as a leaderboard is on Steam, and it's for how many people you've killed overall. I think something like that, or a more arcade-style point system, would add another layer to this game. Having said that, I'm going to go back to what I was 
saying before, while this might not end up being a historical game that, you know, changes the face of everything, it really is just entertaining. And there is more humour to it than the trailers made it seem, especially if you look at the kind of achievements there are. For example, there's Mainstream Guy, where you have to kill 50 hipsters. And you just saw me do a side quest where you hunt the hunters out in the woods. Though having said that, the cheesiness and the humour doesn't quite cut the evil of what the game asks you to do when it asks you to cleanse places. And the terminology is cleanse, which gives you a little look into the guy's mind. It still is fucked up. I'm starting to get the hang of setting traps, which is essential if you're getting swarmed. And it's really satisfying when you pull it off. The only shame is that there's there's no sort of point system or anything to recognise that you've done that and can show your, show your friends or compete, which I think would add longevity. At the end of this level, you're faced with a raid. You just have to survive. I waited at the top of the stairs. I think if they did end up adding multiplayer, if the game sold like they wanted it to and they add that, this sort of bit would be more fun. It's cool as it is, but can you imagine doing this with a friend, just holding out and being evil fuckers together? And finally, once you've cleansed all these folks, you make your escape on a train. Time to leave this place. I can smell some innocent blood. It always tastes better. If you're interested in seeing more of the game, subscribe, because I'm going to do it level by level, picking out highlights like this and commenting on what I thought was cool, what I think could be different, stuff like that. This train's going to be a big iron coffin for all of you. Where are we heading? The next station is near a nuclear power plant. That gives me an idea. Looks like a good opportunity for heavy casualties among this pathetic population. Finally, my journey has a target. But first, I'm gonna cleanse this place of these fucking worthless maggots. Okay, I know I said I was wrong, but are those really his thoughts or is he meant to be saying those and his lips just aren't moving? Because his chin moves and stuff, come on. Cut me some slack. Anyway, this scene is awesome. I really, really like the way they've done the train. I keep seeing all these artsy-fartsy types dismissing the game because it's just a twin stick, and it's like they've stapled their eyes shut just because it's a violent game or something, when normally they'd defend a game that has basically no gameplay and is all about the way it looks. And the people who supposedly champion indie development don't seem to recognise that this is an indie game. And there is actually silliness. Check this out. This is the first thing to happen that really bugged me. I managed to accidentally complete an objective, and one that would have had a big explosion, and I love the explosions in this game. Because I missed the big one, I set up my own consolation prize. I also nearly shit a brick when that one came at me. I can tell you that the difficulty has certainly been ramping up. This is the first time in the game that I had to run away from a fight, just properly get out of there. I went and I hid behind a truck, because even rolling, I was getting screwed. It comes back to the idea that this game is very much about just avoiding getting overwhelmed. While you will see certain and execution several times, the changes in camera angle and scenery help take the edge off the repetition. One small but significant feature is that flashbangs don't just deafen you. While they screw up your playing, they also emphasise the soundtrack. which you might notice, while still brooding, is a little bit busier, almost like it's drifting towards metal. Now, down the railway. Something's telling me, at the next station, there's a nice bloodbath. I mean, there will be. Did you catch those muted power chords? I have hope that it will get heavier yet. In any case, those are my highlights and thoughts on level 3 of Hatred. Subscribe if you want to see what happens in level 4 when they send in the US Army to stop me. Here comes the bloodshed. Time for an iron doom with a high caliber machine gun. They're going to bleed for me profusely. So you start this level with the SWAT van that has a mounted machine gun, which is all very exciting. But in spite of that, this turns out to be one of the most straightforward levels. One of the side missions is literally just going inside a house and pressing a button right at the beginning to set an explosion off. and the other is clearing out a really conspicuous den of arms dealers, which you'd likely clear out regardless because one of your missions is to just kill loads of people. Though I guess it does make sure you won't miss a chance for some pyrotechnics and body armour. If you were curious about fire damage to the player character, you're seeing it here, that flickering. 
There is a second vest which will act as a replacement if yours gets wrecked, but it is a bit of a tease when we know that somewhere down the pipeline there might be multiplayer. There's surprisingly little resistance in this level, you're pretty much just free to kill as you wish. Unless you try to leave, which will trigger an onslaught of police and the army. I actually found this quite hard to deal with and my first attempt at this level I just completely failed. I used up both my respawns. Like I said in my first impressions video, you cannot just be an idiot. Unless your character forces you to be an idiot by glitching out and having some sort of digital seizure. My tactic of bringing the SWAT van to the station did work though. And I think the result speaks for itself. Here's another glitch I caught. I kicked someone and it got rid of my gun and then when I tried to aim it made me flip around and go through the floor. Not game ruining by any means, but it certainly doesn't aid in building up a sinister atmosphere. As has now become routine, after clearing all my enemies out it's time to escape. And luckily, by some dark magic, reaching my checkpoint makes the military forget I'm there. Ah, they're beginning to weaken. Sending an army to fight me. <laughs> Good. More corpses. Time to head downtown. Soil is hungry, and Soil is also thirsty. If you've been watching these, you know the drill. Subscribe if you want to see all of the hatred levels looked at like this. An election rally today. today. I fucking hate I'm politics. Here to speak about crime. More than that. So, I hate politicians. Talk. And I all the scum so easily fed by their lives. <sighs> so this level starts you with a flamethrower and a crowd of people. We know what to do there. Very luckily, you're also started in a position to immediately get a respawn point. One of the side missions is simply to kill the politician. His name's Jose A. Morales. Is that a reference? I don't know. Maybe you will know. You also probably noticed that I got the Kentucky Fried People achievement. The next side mission I went for was simply to burn the money in the bank. I went through each side mission systematically, but this is the most open map so far, and if you wanted to mess around in a sandbox, I think this is the map to screw around on, especially considering the weapon it gives you to start with. As usual, the main mission is to just kill a bunch of people. I decided to just take my time with it, picking people off in between side missions and avoiding the cops. There are quite a few side missions on this level, which means you'll get a lot of respawn points, which you may well need later. Naturally, my favourite one is where you go to the A-phone opening and kill a bunch of hipsters. You even get an achievement for killing 50 50 of them, as you should. The last mission is to shoot people at an arms show, which means you will end up with a lot of ammo, but they will shoot back. Some people have been concerned that enemies would be pushovers. Here is SWAT to taking three point blank shotgun blasts and a kick to the nuts for good measure. Flashbangs are the most lethal thing I've encountered so far. They will screw you. I see many people commenting that, well, it's just a twin stick shooter, and I can't disagree. But where I differ from those people is they say that like it's some huge downside, whereas I am happy to engage with it on its own terms. What I'm enjoying most so far is just the scenes you end up creating through gameplay. As I mentioned in a previous video, I am surprised how few people seem to appreciate just the way the game looks. And I don't just mean the black and white with color. One nation under death. I am genocide, but enough fun, I must get to the power plant. First, I need some high explosives. There is an army base nearby, time to pay them a painful visit. Oh my god! Only two more levels to go through, so subscribe if you want to see them done like this. Let's see if those human shields are able to protect themselves on their own ground. I have to admit that this level fucked me up, so I had to switch to easy difficulty, and even then I barely scraped through. In level 6, the game changes significantly, and pretty much everyone can wreck your shit. I found myself relying heavily on waist-high cover, hiding and then popping up when it's safe to shoot, or destroying enemy's cover in an ambush. Check this out and listen to the music. It's properly pumped up now. Anyway, the side missions for this level. One is to kill the drill sergeant. There's no shortage of explosives in this level, from grenades to rocket launchers, so you can just burst through the house to get the people inside. After cracking it open, I just rushed the sergeant. 
the second side mission, which I didn't actually do, is to destroy some statues. So back to the main mission. You've got to collect some Z4, which here is protected by dudes with rocket launchers. Throughout the level, you'll come across all sorts of storage with them, um, protective vests, and I believe that's what saved my ass there. Two charges should be enough to blow up those fucking parasites. After you've got what you came for, you just have to kill 40 soldiers, who became a bit derpy this time. On my first time through the level, I got caught under a car but didn't die. That was a bit frustrating, and that's what prompted me to say screw it, I'm going easy mode. But that's the only time I've encountered something that did actually annoy me, rather than just being silly. Like those soldiers, those are just funny. Anyway, having killed 40 of them, I made my escape. One man conquering an army base. Nothing compares to this feeling. Absolutely nothing. The power plant nearby, built for their comfort and prosperity. <laughs> now, it will become their doom. A much better use of it. So, one more level to go. Subscribe if you want to see it, and I'm not going to include the ending in the next video. The ending will be a separate video, so don't worry about that being spoiled. If you watch every part, you'll understand what's going on just from watching, so I'm going to take this opportunity to give my final thoughts on Hatred and to answer some questions. First, how long is it? It's about 4 or 5 hours long. This last level took me about 45 to 50 minutes, but most of the levels I've played are more like 25 to 35 minutes. And this isn't accounting for failures and restarts. Do I think the game has a lot of replayability? Not particularly at the moment. I don't think you'd play through the whole thing twice in a row, but I do think you'd beat it and then go back to the levels you like to just fuck around in. If if the modding scene takes off, I could easily see this game being used as the base for some fun levels, a bit like Happy Wheels, but as a genocidal maniac. Maybe some dangerous obstacle course races and things like that. But of course, that's speculation about what might happen. What do you get right now? you get a relatively short, challenging, and entertaining experience. And I keep saying entertaining, it's not a very descriptive word normally, but I think here it's perfect. It's like being the bad guy in a low-budget movie. And just like going to watch a movie that's so bad it's good, you have to go into this with the right mindset. I mean, the gameplay part is fine, the gameplay is fun. You just have to be prepared to be at one with the cheesiness. I wonder if it would work. All right. In case it doesn't, I'll have to try to overload these cores from the control room. Yes, there are bits where it's glitched out and stuff like that, but this is a $20 indie game made in a year, and for the most part, it's actually quite the spectacle. Just like you have to be prepared to accept the cheesiness, you have to be prepared to enjoy the spontaneous, chaotic moments that come up. Do you have one of those friends who's always recommending these weird fucking low-budget horror films? The kind of thing where you know it's going to be tacky, the premise is horrific and disgusting, but you just have to watch it to have watched it. Hatred is the game version of that, although there is potential for it to be more. As it stands, Hatred is doubly niche. It's got the niche for, do you just really like twin sticks? Well, here you go, this is a twin stick. If that's your thing, you'll like this. Are you the kind of person who's into tacky, over-the-top horror? Someone who can get joy out of that? Are you a death metal fan, basically? Hatred is for you. If not, maybe hold off a bit and wait to see what happens with the modding scene. Personally, I'd love to have a physical copy of this just to have. It's that kind of thing. I'd keep it safe next to my Cannibal Holocaust VHS. Okay, so I cut off the ending and that's going to be a separate video just so I don't spoil it for the people who don't want it spoiled but still want to see the highlights. The ending is very, very special, to say the least. How do I overload the reactors? What? No, never! It will cause a massive explosion! Are you insane? That's what I want and you will tell me, or I'll make you die very fucking ah!